is Camel, the Rock and Red Devils. And because of that, Nick Canarino gets another uh, chance to join us on Running Point. Coach, thank you so much for continuing to join us on Running Point to preview these uh, more and more tournament games. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Coach, first and foremost, let's uh, let's go back to the game that got you here. And, I mean, when we talk about this game against Jefferson, it was a tale of two halves if I ever saw. I mean, first half competitive. They were able to keep pace with you. And then it was that third quarter run. It seemed like you guys just turned on the switch. Kevin Moore was making dunks, getting the gym into it. What were some of the big keys you saw from first to second half that really uh, made the difference in this one? Um, I thought first half we, uh, we turned the ball over uh, a lot. And kind of uncharacteristically, uh, I think we had nine in the first half. Uh, I think we averaged like 10 or 11 per game. Uh, so that was kind of uncharacteristic. They hit some shots, too, in the first half. Um, but second half, I just thought our ball pressure and defensive intensity just picked up. Uh, I thought we rebounded really well. And like you said, we hit some shots and, you know, had some dunks that kind of got that place rocking a little bit and kind of took off from there. Coach, seeing this team being able to take over a game, like Ty said, I mean, it was competitive for a while, but you guys just kind of, it almost looked like you made the decision that you were going to win this game and, and there was going to be nothing to stop you from it. Um, that mentality is going to be so important going forward in this tournament the further you guys go. Talk about what that comes from and, and how much you've seen it this year from your guys. I, I think we've seen it a lot, and I, we see it every day at practice. You know, I mean, we have 10 guys um, that can play varsity basketball. Um, with probably two more that, you know, are right on the cusp of it. And, uh, when you have those kind of numbers and that kind of talent, every day is a battle, you know, and, uh, we're just competing every day. And then, like you said, when games come around, you know, you're trying to find who's going to light the spark. You know, we've had some games where, you know, we were down late, weren't really sure what the outcome was going to be. And, you know, somebody steps up. Someone makes a play, someone makes a stop, whatever the case may be. But we got a lot of different guys who can do some things for us. And uh, I just think it comes from every day competing with each other. I think the the most impressive thing with this team is just the the ability to always score at such a high pace. And it just seems like they're moving the ball uh, so fluently now. And you mentioned the, the numbers of guys that could play varsity basketball. And just realizing now that it's the first district title since 2009, I mean, you guys won the MVAC outright. Has it occurred to you or has it hit you yet that you're truly in a, a really special year right now that's going on with this program? I mean, we knew it was going to be special. Uh, I guess when you're kind of in it, you know, people kind of say some things about, you know, how special it is. I mean, we, I think when you kind of think about that, it, you wait till it's over, you know, because we, we don't know how far this is going to go. You know, we hope it keeps going, um, you know, and then we can kind of reflect after the season with that. But I'm just enjoying these guys, you know, um, just interacting every day, just competing, watching film, game plan, stuff like that. It's just it's a it's a good group to be around. Um, it makes the days fly by. You know, this season absolutely flew by, um, but we're just enjoying every second of it. And when you talk about watching film and, and making a game plan, I'm sure you've been really busy trying to game plan against this Mooney team that's coming in off the win over Springfield. Obviously, their defense, especially in their last two games, has flexed their muscles. Mm. What kind of things do you see on tape that, that Mooney is going to pose a threat to you guys? And and what kind of things do you see that you'll have to do to win this game? Well, I mean, we're, we're very familiar with each other. You know, off seasons around here, you get a lot of games played with uh, going against area schools. And us and Mooney have been doing a lot of stuff. We scrimmage before the season. Um, so, I mean, our kids know their kids and, you know, their kids know our kids. But like you said, they're just a gritty group, you know, defensively, very tough, very smart team. Um, they're going to take advantage of mistakes. Uh, we know we know what they're going to run. Ver we think we know what they're going to run versus us, I should say. Um we just got to make sure we're ready for it. You know, we're going to see that one, two, two full court. Uh, we got to make sure we're not trying to dribble through it to beat it. Um, you've seen some of the teams in the playoffs who try to dribble to beat it and they just get buried. You know, they do a, a very good job of executing what they do. Um, but again, we're going to have to put pressure on people, a uh, bigger court here, try to wear some people down. Um, you know, that's where I think our depth kind of comes in where we have a lot of guys who can come in and out and uh, put some pressure on people. And uh, I think it's going to be an exciting game tomorrow. 
just to, uh, to go along with that, talk about the excitement of going down to Canton Memorial Fieldhouse and just getting a chance to play in that in that special place too. And I mean, just getting this opportunity to continue now with fans uh, for the first time in a couple of years playing in a regional semi. Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely exciting. Just that venue down there, you know, um, and what they're doing with that area down there is just unbelievable. The, the uh, construction going on and the new buildings and, fields and all that stuff going on down there it's exciting you know they're putting a lot of money in down there and and that stadium that arena speaks for itself you know the floor is awesome you know um the seating all the way around the two levels it, it, it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm, I'm going to guess that uh the place is going to be pretty packed with uh people from the youngstown area when uh when you watch this when you uh think about this game and you think about you know the last practices winding down before it what are going to be some of your overarching messages or maybe the final messages in the last practice before this game that you talk to your team about? I mean, I think it's pretty much the same for us. It's, it's you know, don't get too high with the highs. Don't get too low with the lows. You know, I think we've done a pretty good job of being pretty even keel throughout the year. You know, just, you're going to have bad quarters. You're going to have bad possessions. Um, but I think we do a good job of picking each other up. Um you know, we don't hang our heads. We've got good leadership. And, um, you know, that it, it's just hoping this isn't the last practice we have. You know, that's that's the message. We, we want to keep playing. You got to win. You know, and again, if we want to get to our, uh, you know, end of season goals, then we're going to take care of business tomorrow. We've coined them the Rock and Red Devils for a reason, and that's because of the fan support that they've been able to get. I mean, it gets these gyms rocking. And when we got the news that broke that Howland's gym was going to be sold out and you guys had the big end and every single seat uh, was occupied by Red Devil Faithful, just talk to me about uh, community support because it's not the biggest community in the world, but it seemed like everyone in Camel was uh, in that gym that night. Yeah, I mean, just so happy, just so proud to be a part of this. Uh, I mean, this community has been waiting for a, a team like this for a while. And uh, like you said, we're coming out for warmups and the, and the gym's already packed on our side. You know, you didn't really re- realize it till after the game, you know, with, with the um, medals and the nets cutting and stuff with the people on the floor. Kind of just open your eyes like, wow, there are a ton of camel people here. You know, they're all giving you hugs and high fives and, you know, sending emails and texts and all that stuff about how proud they are. And it, it's awesome to see. You know, hopefully we get to keep it going. Um, but like I said, I, I'm sure they're going to be out tomorrow, and uh, th- that arena is going to be packed. You know, you've talked about it before in this interview, but you guys, especially you as coaches, you don't get to really take it in during the season because you're so focused on the game and the winning and everything. Um, what's it kind of been like trying to not get caught up and and get caught taking everything in and taking the 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 talent on this team in and taking the community support in and just trying to – almost for lack of a better term tunnel vision into what you guys have to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's honestly, hasn't been that difficult just because, you know, we haven't been that successful in the past, you know, and, and some of those years, you know, um, where you're going into some games, you know, where, you know, like, Oh man, like let's try to keep this under 20, you know? And uh, when you're dealing with that for a few years and now you got a group like this, where you, you like your chances in every game you play, um, you know, you, you don't want to take it for granted because you never know when it's going to happen again. You know, we're very fortunate to have this group. And uh, like I said, I'm just enjoying every day of it, and hopefully it doesn't end. Coach, just one more question for me. Looking at this uh, this Mooney game, we kind of got the, the keys to the game from you two. Uh, just looking real quickly on, I mean, obviously your offense has been hitting uh, strides with 70 plus every single game. You guys did it again the last one, too. This one looks like it could be a defensive battle. What can you say about your team's defensive side of the ball uh, when they have to get in those defensive grudge matches? How well have you seen them fare in those kind of games this season? Obviously, you would think pretty well with just the one loss on the season. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I, I think our defense is kind of underrated. You know, we're not giving up a ton of points. Um, but I think our offense kind of – is what everyone sees, you know, that's the, you see the points, but again, a lot of those points are caused from our defense. You know, a lot of them are getting the, the, the rebounds off of one shot, you know, not giving up second and third chance opportunities. You know, some of those games where we've struggled a little bit, we've given some second and third opportunities and possessions. Um, but I think lately our, our, our defensive pressure, the ball pressure we have, you know, we got a couple guys who 
we really like on the ball and we'll take on the ball versus anybody. Um, and, and that really disrupts teams. You know, I think you saw it in the second half of the last couple of games where, you know, they're starting their offense back behind the volleyball line close to half court. And it's tough to run your offense from that far because then you're letting the athletes like Kevin and Xavion and Skebos and them guys really shoot passing lanes and, and, and be there for uh, steals. And then again, I, when we get in transition, we, we, we like when we're in transition because again, we got a lot of people who can score. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and, and helping us preview this game against Mooney tomorrow night. We're looking forward to it so much. I know Ty will be up there along with Alec Caberna for the call uh, on YSN. We thank you so much for the time again, and we wish you the best of luck in this game. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys having me on. See you tomorrow, Ty. See you tomorrow, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. Yep.